recently, I finished Death's Door. This is a game that was published by Devolver Digital and created by Acid Nerve that released in 2021. The game overall follows a crow who has basically the power of death and is meant to reap souls. He uses various doors in this door dimension in order to get to the souls and reap them, and it basically uses a mixture of combat and puzzle mechanics as well as exploring this top-down world in various different locations and taking down various different bosses, mini-bosses, and enemies. You can also along the way find various different weapons, or you can actually skip over them entirely and kind of just zoom through and get to each boss relatively quickly. If you know where you're going, everything seems to really just click very fast, and I can see how this uh, game might be very good for speedruns, for example. Now, real quickly, I will say I did do a first impression review a while ago over on the channel. I'll link that in the description in case you guys want to see that. That way you can play it yourself and then you can come back and watch this final stretch review because I am going to be doing spoilers. So let's go ahead and get into it. Like I mentioned, you play this crow who is tasked with gathering these souls. However, upon trying to gather this large soul, what you find is that this other old gray crow has been trapped in this dimension for a long time outside of the door dimension and can't get his door open. He's not allowed to return until he reaps his giant soul, so he needs help opening this door that the soul is trapped within. So your goal is to then hunt down the various beasts that are within the lands that you're in. There's three of them, including a grandma who owns this manor where you go in, you break these pots in order to gain your like weapons, such as like arrows or fireballs, etc. And then you run around and you take out as many enemies, some of them being covert as you can in order to solve various different puzzles and make your way to the grandma in order to finally take her out. Each boss has their own unique, of course, like different attacks and whatnot, and has various gimmicks. For example, the grandma has all sorts of pots and pot bombs that she will throw at you, as well as each one has their unique stories. For example, there's this uh, like monster named Betty that is revered by the people in the surrounding areas of the mountains that she's within, and so when you kill her, it's kind of this prophesied thing that she would be downfelled by somebody at some point and that that person would be the savior of the lands. So you go through and you unlock the different areas. The puzzles generally revolve around one, replenishing your ammo like I mentioned with the various environmental things that you can break and then using your ammo and various different spells in order to actually move forward. So for example, first of all, you start with a red sword with a red bow and you utilize those in order to shoot things or do various various different aspects, like for example shooting the arrow through fire in order to light one of the fire uh, areas. Beyond that too, what you can do after each location, you will fight this uh, wave of enemies inside of a avarium, and basically once you finish those enemies off in each section, you'll get a brand new spell. So you first start off with the bow, then you get the fireballs, then you get, uh, I believe, uh, the bombs and then beyond that you have some sort of uh, like uh, chain thing that you can toss and it'll get you over other people. It's like a grappling hook essentially. So each unique spell has their own ways that you can utilize them within your gameplay and create your own various gameplay styles. For example, the fire is fun to use because you can use it at a pretty far distance where the arrows might do a little less damage but they're also a little bit more reliable in some ways and a bit faster the bomb does all sorts of damage but takes a lot of time to uh, you know charge up and really is a hit or miss and then when it comes to the grappling hook you can grapple onto enemies which does a very little bit of damage but doesn't damage them all that much and then brings you into hit range so you need to be ready to spam that strike button now there's also uh, you know the fact that you can just kind of run away from enemies target specific enemies over others certain enemies may have shields or various other aspects and I find that the varying aspects of the different levels and the different enemies that you find throughout is one of the most endearing and fun parts of this game. Every part feels genuinely unique, everything from the Lost Cemetery to the Ceramic Manor to the uh, Crow's Nest area to all sorts of different aspects of the game. And on top of that, there is a whole extra piece to the story after the main storyline that if you are a completionist, you can go through and get the secret ending as well. The entire game has a level of difficulty 
I will admit. Like, there are definitely some really hard parts. For example, when I first got into, like, this garden area, not the Garden of the Ceramic Manor, but where you find, like, the plants that, uh, you know, blow things up and whatnot, it was definitely hard to get down, like, how you uh, manage so many enemies at once and how to kind of train them similar to zombies in Call of Duty. There was definitely a lot of gameplay mechanics like that that made it a bit easier, but really your best bet of getting through this game is just kind of bunkering down and figuring out the various different spells you have and utilizing them in a good mixture with uh, the various different weapons that you can use, such as the dual blades. I also would say that the dual blades are definitely your best bet. You get that in the garden by fighting this mini boss, and essentially what you can do is you can utilize that to hit faster and at uh, a similar like amount of damage, so it's definitely quite useful. Uh, but that's all I have to really say about Death's Door. It's a really good game that has a lot of fun aspects, a really cute art style, and a pretty decent story. The entire thing basically ends up that you, in a lot of ways, kill death, and you have to kind of put the world back to how it used to be. It's very fun, it's very interesting, and I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I would give this a 3.5 to maybe even a full 4 out of 4 stars. What do you guys think? Have you played this game? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments down below. Besides that, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That'll pop up during the outro, and the rest of our links are down in the description, too. We have gaming sessions for gaming content, movie and smoking sessions for movie content, Crazy Rocky for variety content, and the Tri Podcast is our podcast channel. All right, guys, I'll see you all in the next one. Just to open up a newer car